the life that Jesus Christ came to make available. All right. Well, God bless you all in the wonderful name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And welcome to this fellowship where we're going to get into the greatness of God's Word. I'd like to have you go to Acts chapter 2, because that's where I'm going, Acts chapter 2. And I have taught this teaching a few times, but it's a wonderful teaching, and I just want to do it once more, maybe uh, with a little more to it than before. But in Acts chapter 2 and verse 42, it says, they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayer. And the name of this teaching is the apostles' doctrine. We're going to look and see what, what it was that they fellowshiped around. It says they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. So what was the apostles' doctrine? Well, you can read it right here in Acts chapter 2 because Peter does his first sermon on that day of Pentecost, the start of the church to which you and I belong to. And he lays forth God's word, and it's the apostles' doctrine that he led forth and that they started to fellowship around and teach one another so they would have that as their foundation as far as the start of the new church that started on the day of Pentecost. So to really see this, I'm going to start in Acts chapter 2, verse 1. From chapter 1 to uh, verse 13 is just the beginning of it, but Peter starts his sermon in verse 14. But I'd like to read the entire context so we can see what Peter was going through when he did his first sermon, the first sermon ever done. That's what we're going to look at. And in verse 1 it says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, it was fully, you know what? It was on its way of coming since Genesis 3, 15, when the promised seed was first announced. And so, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And I know what that place was. It's the temple. That's where they all got together. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And that house, once again, was the temple. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. This verse has so much instruction in it and learning. It says they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. This is the first time anyone ever was able to receive Holy Spirit by seed, the seed of Christ within them. The first time it was available, and they began to speak. So they did the speaking. You see that? With other tongues, as the Spirit, the Spirit is God, gave them to utterance. So in other words, when you speak in tongues, you do the speaking, but God gives you the words. You just start speaking. Look at this. I just start speaking. I do the speaking. God has the words. So it's easy to speak in tongues. Verse 5, And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were conf confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. As they were out there, if you, whatever language you spoke, you heard them speaking in your language. And they were all amazed and marveled and said one to another, 
Behold, are not all these which speak Galilean? And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? And then it lists them. It says, Pothenides and Medes and Emerites and the dwellers of Mesopotamia and in Judea and Cappadocia and in Pontius and in Asia and Phrygia and Panthea in Egypt and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene and strangers of Rome and Jews and Postulites and Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. See, God's word says they were speaking the wonderful works of God. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? What does this all mean? Others, mocking, said, These men are full of new wine. And this is really as they mock. And by the way, whenever anyone does a spiritual thing, there's always people that mock. There's always people say, That's silly. And they mock them, but they're really mocking them here because they said they, they, are, they are full of new wine. Now, new wine means not fermented. They're saying these guys are drunk on grape juice, even mocking them even more. But now, in verse 14, is where I normally start this teaching, but there's the context, there's the background. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, he lifted up his voice, and he said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwelt in Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. What a first statement to start off the Christian church. What a statement. You know, bold. He says, Hey, you guys, listen to me. I got something to say. That's what he's saying. For these are not drunken as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. It's nine in the morning. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last day, says God, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And upon my servant, and upon my handmaid, maiden, will I pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And that's what they were doing. God promised, he says, there's a time coming where I'm going to give all mankind the uh, Holy Spirit. All they have to do is believe in Jesus Christ, confess Him as Lord in their life, and they'll have Holy Spirit. And once they get it, then they have a connection with God. Pretty neat. Verse 19 says, And I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vaporous smoke, and the sun shall turn into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and noble day of the Lord come. And this, some of this stuff, this stuff here is in the future because the Lord hasn't come back yet. Then verse 21 says, And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So who is this available to? Whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord, this is available to you. Pretty wild. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a God among... No, 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 excuse me. A man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. See, it was only 50 days before this that Jesus Christ was uh, raised from the dead, crucified, all that. So everyone knew about this Jesus Christ. And Peter is saying, you crucified him. 
You did it. Look. But God did these miracles by him. Verse 23. And him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain. Peter, when he's teaching, does something really kind of different than most preachers. He says, you did it. <laughs> he says, you did it. Most preachers would say, well, we did it. Or, I'm amongst you. You know what I mean? But he didn't do that. He said, you killed him. You said, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. They yelled it with all their might. They wanted to kill him. And they did. I just love this. And he says, And ye have taken him by wicked hands, have crucified and slain, whom God has raised up, having loosened the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holding it. See, as we're reading this, this, these things that we're reading, they are the doctrine, the apostles' doctrine. They really are. And we can see that if you shall, whoever confesses the name Jesus Christ shall be saved. And Jesus Christ of Nazareth, a man approved of God, which God did miracles and signs by him, as you know, and him being you know, by the foreknowledge of God, you've took them and you've taken them and you crucified them. But God raised them up. Pretty neat. Because, it says, it was not possible that he should be holding of it. And for David, now Peter's going to tell him about David. David spaketh concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face for he is on my right hand. Now, where did David see him? Well, David wasn't alive at the time that Jesus Christ was around. He foresaw him in the future. He saw him in his mind. He heard the word of God. He believed the word of God. And he believed that Jesus Christ was going to come. That's what it's talking about. For he is on my right hand that I should not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice, this is David speaking, and my tongue was glad, moreover also my flesh shall rest in hope. He knew that even if he died, there was going to be a time coming where Jesus Christ was going to come back and he was going to get up. That's what that resting in hope is all about. Because thou will not leave my soul in hell. And that word hell means grave, in the grave. So David knew that he would not be left in the grave. Neither wilt thou suffer thy Holy One to see corruption. Thou hast made known to me the ways of life. Thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance. This is what David was confessing. David was saying, Jesus is coming, and when he does, I got hope, the hope of his return. Verse 29 says, Men and brethren, let me speak freely unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried. So where's David? He's, he's dead and buried, right? He's not floating around somewhere or none of that stuff. He is dead and buried. And his sepulchre is, you know, not too far away. It's right with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet, so here Peter is saying that David was a prophet. Being a prophet and knowing that God had sworn with an oath unto him that of the fruits of his loins, according to the flesh, he would rise up Christ to sit on his throne. And that's what's going to happen. Jesus Christ is going to sit on the throne of David, of Israel. He is going to be the king of kings. Verse 31, he seeing this before spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell. And the word hell is uh, graved him in the grave. Neither his flesh did see corruption. You know why? Because God got him up. He got up. 
This Jesus hath God raised up, whereof we are all witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God, exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he hath shed forth both this, which ye now see and hear. What did they now see and hear? They, they saw them speak with tongues. They saw them move their lips, their throat, their vocal cords, and then they heard the words that they spoke. So they saw it. It was done right in front of them. And the people that saw it that day said, they're speaking the wonderful works of God. And they were fabulasted. They were amazed, it says. Verse 34 says, For David is not descended into heaven, but he said himself, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand, till I make thy foals thy footstool. So Jesus Christ is sitting on the, the right hand of God right now, until I make thy foes thy footstool. Therefore let all the house of Israel know it surely that God has made that same Jesus whom ye crucified. And once again he says, you crucified. You guys did it. You know something? I didn't crucify Jesus Christ. I wasn't there. But these guys were there. But after they were, he was crucified, it says, both Lord and Christ. Jesus Christ has become the Lord and Christ. Verse 37, Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts, and they said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? And then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission or the forgiveness of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of that Holy Spirit. You just repent and, and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. It doesn't say water. Nope. It says in the name of Jesus Christ. For forgiveness of sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That Holy Spirit gives you that connection with God. For the promise is unto you and to your children, and to all that are afar off while we made it. You know, even in waterful Maine, even as many as the Lord our God shall call, and with many other words. So what we've been reading here are the, is the Apostles' Doctrine, but it says here there are many other words that he spoke that, we, that are not recorded. Did he testify and exhort saying, save yourselves from this untoward genera generation. And when they had received, when they had gladly received the word, were baptized, and the same day they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. What a meeting. At that meeting, 3,000 people said, I want this. Pretty neat. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. All these things that we just read about. And as you read about this, you can see that Jesus Christ, they talk about him, that God raised him from the dead, that he's both Lord and Christ, he's Lord in their life. And, it, and Peter says unto them, repent or change your mind, change your mind. And you and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, and you're going to receive the gift, the gift of Holy Spirit. So that's what they shared with each other when they were meeting. And it says, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, and in fellowship, and in breaking of bread, and in prayers, and fear or respect came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And they all believed and were together, 
and had all things common. You know what they had together and what was common? They believed in what Jesus Christ accomplished for them. And so that's what they talked about. That's what they fellowshiped around. They shared the apostles' doctrine with one another. And they were blessed with that. In verse uh, 45 says, And they sold their possessions, S, and goods, it has an S at the end, and departed them to all as every man had need. See, they, they used what they knew from the Old Testament in tithing and giving, and when they had more than an abundance and others didn't have enough, they gave to those people. It was just wonderful. They were so thankful and blessed that they received that gift of Holy Spirit, that they now had a connection with God, that they just knew that everything was because of God. And they just had this feeling as they lived, well, God is the reason we got what we got. Everything belongs to God anyhow. So they didn't mind giving their extras. And you see, that's why I pointed out the S, meaning they didn't give what they needed. They gave the excess that they had. Pretty neat. And then in verse 46 says, And they continued daily with one accord in the temple and breaking of bread from house to house into their homes. And they did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. They were blessed and they were celebrating their Lord Jesus Christ and what he accomplished for them so they could have eternal life. They had the gift of Holy Spirit and now they could have nine manifestations. They had a connection with God. A person without Holy Spirit has no connection with God except what they can hear someone say to them or they can read in their Bibles. And then they can believe it and then get that Holy Spirit. But they were just so blessed about it and they were sharing this apostle's doctrine with each other. This was the first sermon on the first day of the Christian church. And later, these, the apostle's doctrine was expanded and augmented and more information given through the church epistles. So there's more information about that gift of Holy Spirit available to us and how to operate nine manifestations, how to live the more abundant life that Jesus Christ came to make available. But this was the very first sermon, and this is where their start, which is pretty neat. And look at verse 47, the last verse of this chapter. And they were praising God and having favor or grace. It's the same Greek word with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. So who added to the church? The Lord. They just shared the grace. They just shared. You should see what we get when we believe what Jesus Christ is gone, we get this Holy Spirit. We can operate it. We can pray and get answers to prayer. We can have our needs met. We can have an abundance in life. Jesus Christ came that we could have life and have a more abundant. We just tell everybody, hey, you don't have to live the way you were. You can have life and have a more abundant. Which would you rather have? I know what I'd rather have. That's why I'm sharing it with you. Because this is the greatest life ever. This is the greatest life ever. To be a believer, Holy Spirit, living with the apostles' doctrine and more is available to us today as we continue reading the Bible in the church epistles. Have a wonderful week ahead. Just blessed and celebrating our Lord and Savior. And letting people know about it. You know something? I just have this thought that I'd like to share with you. The greatest name of all names is Jesus Christ. We should speak about Jesus Christ all the time. We should mention the name of Jesus Christ to people all the time. We should say, Jesus Christ, the greatest name I know, through the name of Jesus Christ is deliverance, healings, signs, miracles, and wonders, living abundantly, 
is all available through the name of Jesus Christ. What do you think about the name of Jesus Christ? Well, you tell me what you think about the name of Jesus Christ, and I could, I'll be able to tell you how far you go with God. Because it is the greatest name of all. And we should speak that name as much as we can. Well, dear God, we're so blessed and thankful that you're our God, that you love us, that you've given us your word, that we have the Apostles' Doctrine to look at, the start of the information in the age of grace, in the, the age that we live in, God. And God, I thank you that we can be so blessed in what we have, and we can celebrate and share with people house to house, and wherever we gather. And I thank you for this. In the name of your wonderful Son, Jesus Christ, amen. The episode is complete, so head over to stevejanes.com for show notes. While there, sign up for our newsletter, grab the freebies, and check out all that Reverend Steve Janes has available. Steve has plenty to give, audio and video teachings, articles, blogs, and biblical study books, all there to help you continue to grow in God's grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All keys to help you live the life you've always wanted to live.